not a profitable business module. It was all fake and fraud. The ISO, ISO certification that they always uh, show it in the catalogs, uh, they sell it, to, uh, sell it off to the investors, was totally fraudulent because the ISO certification was not for deposit mobilization. The ISO certification was for car rentals. The car and, and ISO and, and the ISO, the company itself wrote to Masood that you are misusing our certification that has been given to you for car rentals, you are misusing it for deposit mobilization. That is an evidence against them. Now the point is, sitting in jail, Masood is being able to trouble. Now he's filed a case against his lawyers. He's filed a case against Virendra Maurya. He's filed a case against... And most of the people who are voicing the opinions are in the forefront of the activities to put him in the dock. He's trying to file cases against them. And that is possible because of the huge money that he has got. The point is, where has he got the 50 lakhs to be paid as a bail a bailout in the Chennai High Court? Where the money is coming? That high profile, the topmost lawyers, advocates That's who right. are hired in Chennai and <coughs> all the other places. The, the, the investors believe that the administration has slowly become, uh, its activities have become lax. They are not pursuing the case the way it should. And definitely the investors total you know withdrawal the uh, talk on kind of withdrawal syndrome because they are not getting involved in these cases anymore probably these things are motivating the enforcement agencies to slowly uh, you know relieve the dragnet that they have uh, put around him right I, I tell you what Vedant if you could just come in on this uh, what, what, what I would like to ask you is this in terms of the overall case where do you see it going in terms of the investigation in terms of whatever is happening over here in, in India and of course in the United States where do you see this, this thing going? At the moment, with us, Vedant Rajput from Toronto in Canada, and he's the man who's filed a couple of cases against Masood and his companies in the United States. Vedant. Well, see, I, I have a feeling that this, this thing, unless there is a major breakthrough that, that comes through, this, this, this case in India will take, will take several years. Right. The key player, the key, the key agency in this entire investigation is the enforcement director. They have to, they have to get those letter regulatories out ASAP to the UK, to the United States, to the Singapore government, to the UAE, to Hong Kong. That's the only way we are going to be able to get some of that money that's sitting outside to, to come back into the country so the investors can be paid. Right. The properties that have been found, the properties that have been found by, by the EOW, by the enforcement <coughs> directorate, yes. the, 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 the checks, the, the demand drafts that have been frozen by the, by the enforcement directorate, I mean, the total comes to about 200 to 300 crores. That's peanuts. I mean, that's not going to be enough to pay anyone. Yes. There are agencies fighting over it. I mean, there, 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 are, there are about 10 to 12 agencies. There is EOW from Chennai, there is EOW from Mumbai, there is EOW from Delhi. They're all fighting over it. The EOW, so EO, I, I tell you what, EOW from Delhi has put up his hands and said, hey, we've got nothing. We've got nothing against Masood, against Mrs. Masood, that is. We've got nothing at all against her. That's what they've said. And uh, they, they've said it more or less on record. Right, go ahead. Go ahead with that. So, so there are agencies fighting over this, these properties that have been found. Right. So by the time the agencies come to a consensus as to who really takes charge of those properties, Investors are, not, investors are going to be in a limbo. There has to be some, some major breakthrough that has to take place. And this is going to come from all these diamond traders that are sitting overseas, who are the ones who are receiving the Sahawala money, who are taking their cuts, who are, who are sending the funds to Chan Masood and Jabin Masood, and wiring the money back to City, city uh, Limousine. Right. When ED got involved and stopped these transfers, that's what triggered the check bouncing. Right. So the money right. that's sitting outside has Gee. to come back into the country. Right. That's when investors will see some success. Unless and until that does not happen, it's going to be a problem. Gee. Right. Um, so one frightening thing about this is Masood is still sitting over a lot of money. Masood is still sitting over a lot of money in which the investigating agencies have not done anything. The, the enforcement directorate has really not done anything. And this money can be used by Masood for any activities to see that he sails out of these cases, he's bailed out of all these cases, right. and slowly and slowly we'll find that he just moves out of the country. The point is, why is the enforcement directorate, even the first case, the enforcement has only filed one case, that is a 2007 case. None of the recent cases they have taken, you know, even for the first 2007 case, they have not got the custody of Masood family. They have not got the custody of the directors of Cyril Limousin. Very, very fact is when Sima Razaki is out and when enforcement directorate complains that they are waiting for their custody, why 
Why was Seema Razaki not taken into custody by Enforcement Directorate? That itself would have triggered a fear. It seems to be that slowly and steadily the cases, the, 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 the drag net that has been laid out for them, they're slowly moving it loose. I mean, it's getting loose. And these you, 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 you know what, Pradeep, unless and until, I think Vedant, you're still with us. Pradeep, yep. the fact remains that unless and until the investors get together and put enough pressure on the government, uh, unless and until the finance ministry moves, unless and until the home ministry moves, and unless and until this is done at the highest level possible, nothing is going to come through, nothing is going to come out, because till now we are not even sure of the amount of money involved in this entire thing. We, we, we you know, we, we, the, those were pictures of Masood with his family that we had them on. Now, but the fact remains that as far as Masood is concerned and the rest of the people are concerned, somehow or the other, as we mentioned yesterday, not one single opposition politician, forget about the ruling party, even though I, I am, I'm surprised why they are silent as well. After all, these guys are there, their voters, these, the, you know, these, these people are their voters, people have lost their money. None of these people is willing to make even a single statement. Aaj ki darik mein ek bhi satta paksh ka shaks ho ya vipaksh ka ho koi bhi masood ke khilaaf ek shabd bolne ko tayyar nahi hai. Nobody, nobody is willing to say a word against masood and that is something which is shocking because you pick up the smallest possible issue and you hold the Lok Sabha and the Rajya Sabha to a standstill but in this case nobody, nobody says a word. Vedant, one final word from you before we let you go. Uh, one final word on how do you think you over there can make a contribution and how can we help? Do tell us. Well, see, I'm, my, my focus, like I told you, is, is, is not really what, 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 what Masood did in India. My focus is what he did outside of India. Right. I mean, he was traveling to Turkey and he was traveling to Nigeria and he was traveling to the U.S. He was coming to Miami every three months. Right. My focus is that. I want to know what, who his contacts in, 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 in these countries were. What, I mean, of course, it is money laundering. What I want to know is who his Hawala contact in Mumbai was. Right. Who was the one who was helping him, uh, helping him get all this, uh, all this cash outside the country? That is yes. the focus, and that's what I'm, I'm, I'm going to be after, because that, that is really the, the key in this, in this entire investigation. Right. That is the only way these investors are going to get paid. Right, Vedant, thank you so much for joining us and hope to have you on again soon and hopefully we should have some good news with regard to investors but the only thing which I feel is unless and until investors get together and put enough pressure on governments all over the place wherever Masood has operated, nothing is going to happen. That's what I believe. Vedant, thank you very much. Thank you. That is Vedant Rajput from Toronto. Right, Pradeep, one final word from you as well. Sir, a long way to go in this particular investigation. There is no one central umbrella who is monitoring the entire cases. And because there is no central monitoring over these, every economic offences wing of every state are going to take their own time or probably act of omission or act of commission. Whatever is going to happen, there is going to be omissions of all sort to see that Masood and all the directors are let free. The point is, the enforcement directorate has to act. <clears throat> the enforcement directorate has to take over all the 28 FIRs that have been filed against Masood and family, Masood and all the directors of Sudhir Mosin. There has to be a special court that has to be appointed. Number two, we have to uh, pressurize our politicians to shake the finance minister as well as the home minister to find out how this huge amount of Hawala trade trading has been involved in these particular cases and what have they really done. Because if Masood can do it, a lot of other people who can uh, you know, damage, the, the, uh, uh, damage the country for, uh, in terrorist activities, they are totally active. But the if fact remains, can, Pradeep, but the, fact you, remains, the fact remains that as far as Masood is concerned, this is not just a financial scam. This is economic terrorism at its worst. This, it, is, it is financial terrorism. This man should be treated like a terrorist. He, what, look at what he has done. He has subverted. Thousands upon thousands upon thousands upon thousands of people. He has subverted their character and he has subverted an entire system. And today, if we are not able to get this money back for the investors, it will be a shame. It will be a shame that this country will not be able to live with. The politicians are not active. Nobody is acting. Now the government is really bothered. It doesn't, I mean, it surprises me. 15,000 to 20,000 crores is the amount that we are talking. We are talking more than 5,000 crores moving out of the country and into the country by the way of Havala. And it is absolutely shocking and disbelief. The finance minister says that he is not aware of this particular case. If the finance ministry and the home ministry, they say that we don't understand, we don't have knowledge about this, then that is totally a disbelief. No, nobody can take. The point is, they are in action is leading to inaction, inactive, uh, inaction from all the uh, uh, this enforcement wings. They are not doing the job properly. That's exactly. Now, they, they uh, cite various reasons. 
Delhi Economic Offensive says we have got too much work of the Commonwealth Games coming on uh, uh, coming on Delhi. Economic Offensive Mumbai say 